y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I hauled in January. <laughs> So in total in January, I ended up hauling 13 books to my collection. Some of them I don't actually have physically with me because I bought them at the beginning of the year before I moved to my new college town. So I'm going to quickly talk about those first, get those out of the way because I don't physically actually have them with me. So the first book that I got in January was The Duchess Steel by Tessa Dare. I got this from Half Price Books. I already have a copy of the Duchess Steel. I love The Duchess Steel so much. It's a historical romance dealing with a guy who has a, a scarred face and he asks this dressmaker to be his bride just so he can produce an heir. Sparks might fly between them and something more might happen in the end. Um, I love this book a lot. I love this series a lot but the main reason why I got this book is because I actually had the hardback edition and so it didn't match all of my other books in the series that were mass market paperbacks so I wanted them to match so I bought a mass market paperback to match all of them. Next is another book that I also got at Half Price Books. We have Pride and Prejudice and Emma by Jane Austen. I don't know if I can give the picture of the edition that I found but I found this beautiful edition of this book for really really cheap and I had to get it for my classics collection. I love Pride and Prejudice and Emma so much. Those are my two favorite Jane Austen books. If you didn't know, these are two classics, British classics, that I love. Next, also to have price books, I found Landline by Rainbow Rowell. I really wanted to get all of the books by Rainbow Rowell, find all of the books, and this was a beautiful edition. I don't know if I could put the picture up, but it had like a really pretty pink and gray striped spine to it that looked gorgeous, and I've had my eye on this copy of Landline in this half price books for literally a year, and I finally bought it. Chelsea from Chelsea Dolling Reads absolutely loves this book and I believe it has something to do with this girl's in a marriage but maybe she's not happy in it and then she like gets a phone call and gets like sucked back in time to when they met or something like that. All I know is it has something to do with like magical realism with calling a phone. <laughs> I don't know but she loves it and I really trust Chelsea's opinion so I decided to pick it up to add to my collection to my endless TBR. <laughs> and the last book that I do not physically own is another book that I found at Half Price Books for literally five dollars is a hardback version of Catwoman Soul Stealer by Sarah J Mass. I don't know if I'm actually interested in reading this book but I am Sarah J Mass trash so I found it for five bucks. This is a reimagining I believe of Catwoman from the DC Comics. Now I don't know a lot about DC Comics whatsoever. <laughs> Who knows, I may get to this someday, sometime, I don't know, but it's to add to my Sarah J Mass collection. Okay, getting to the books that I actually physically have, we have A Series of Unfortunate Events, The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket. First book in the A Series of Unfortunate Events. I bought this because it was really cheap and I didn't realize how short it was. I didn't grow up with these books whatsoever. These are middle grade books dealing with the Baudelaire family, Baudelaire siblings, and them trying to run from this Count Olaf who was trying to steal their inheritance because their parents recently passed away. And I believe the series is all about these kids living a very unfortunate life filled with bad luck. I've heard great things about this series and I really enjoyed the TV show. I really did. It's on Netflix. Um, so I decided to get the first book and I feel like this would be a great book to pick up on a whim one day when I'm feeling to read something different than what I usually do. Next is the last book that I got at Half Price Books. We have Pride by Evie Zaboy. This is a retelling of Pride and Prejudice um, but set in modern day and with people of color. That's all I know about it. It takes place in Brooklyn. Apparently like a really wealthy family move in to kind of like a rundown neighborhood and they try to fix it up when our main character woman does not want that to happen because she thinks they're neighborhood is perfectly fine. I believe it's a relationship between one of the sons maybe in that family who moved in. I've been wanting to read more Pride and Prejudice retellings so this fits the bill for that and I found a really pretty pink edition at uh, Half Price Books and even Naked It is Pink. <gasps> Whoa that's spine. <gasps> that's so pretty I've never seen that before. <laughs> the next two books are books that I purchased at Barnes & Noble when I first moved to my college town. I of course went and did a Barnes and Noble trip the first week that I was here. I picked up two books because I'm trying to limit my book spending. <laughs> I haven't been to a bookstore since this, a bookstore since this, so 
I'm very proud of myself. They're both books that I've had my eye on and I really wanted them. I, I did research about these books and I really wanted them and thought that I would really, really love them. I have yet to read both of these, but I feel like it was a great investment for me. First we have A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. I've had my eye on this book for so stinking long but the Barnes & Noble in my hometown never had the first book. This is the first book in the Reluctant Royals series and they always had the second or third book which I wanted the first one. Seeing it in the store finally gave me an excuse to actually buy it. <laughs> all I know about this book is that it is a royalty romance. That's all I know about it. I have not heard a bad review about this book so I'm really hopeful and excited to read it. I've heard great things about the series in general, so I'm very excited to read this, and I believe the audiobook is on Audible Escape, so I might give this a listen and a read very soon. The other book that I found at Barnes & Noble that I really, really wanted was Sick Kids in Love by Hannah Moskowitz. This has to deal with chronic illness, and of course, me being someone who has a chronic illness really wanted to read this book. I picked it up mainly to see if I could add it to my recommendation list for or books that deal with illness, chronic illness, or sickness, disability of some kind. So our main character woman here has rheumatoid arthritis and then she meets another sick kid and he has a chronic illness. Our main character woman Isabel has never heard of before and something she can't even pronounce. And it's like talking about how she's finally met someone who understands what it's like to be sick. That sounds so stinking good to me. This is a YA book and I am really intrigued because I haven't read a YA contemporary in a while. So hopefully this will get me back into that genre that I love but I haven't really dedicated the time to. Next we have Bride of the Sea by Emma Hamm. This is the third book in her Other Worlds series, a book that I had on my shelf back home was Heart of the Fae. It had like that beautiful illustrated cover on the front. Um, that was the first book in the series. This is the third book in the series and each book is a retelling of a fairy tale and this one I guess is a retelling of The Little Mermaid as the cover is showing. I don't know anything about this book. I don't want to know anything about this book. Emma Hamm writes amazing fantasy romance books so if you're into fantasy romance books I really recommend checking out Emma Hamm. The main reason why I got this is because it was on sale on Amazon I believe for six dollars which this is an indie book. It would normally be 14 to 15 dollars I got for six. Okay we're halfway through this video so I'm going to pull a name from my shout out mug. So let's see here. This one. Okay we have, can't see here, Blonde Books, Angela. I don't even know if Angela knows who I am, but um, I love Angela a lot. I really connect with Angela just because she deals with some health issues herself. She's had, I believe, surgeries on her heart, if I'm not mistaken, and I really relate to her in um, just the way that she talks about her illness sometimes because I deal with it too. I really relate to her a lot on that level. I also love her taste in books. <laughs> she reads a lot of YA if I'm not mistaken and I love hearing her recommendations and her personality is just so so much fun. I just love watching her and she's an amazing booktuber and like it just shows in her videos she puts a lot of effort into them. Please go check out Angela. <laughs> she's an amazing amazing booktuber. Next is a book that I am probably going to unhaul because <laughs> I mistakenly bought it. We have a book for a class. <laughs> uh, the Strange Career of Jim Crow by C. Van Woodward. Um, this is for my US history course. Didn't know that he already had excerpts from the book online to read and we only had to read those excerpts. I thought we had to read the whole book so I bought the book <laughs> which was dumb because I did not need to buy this. This just talks about segregation. We were learning about segregation in the late 19th century in my course during the time that we had to read this. A bunch of our test was over this. I've already taken the test over this. I don't need this book anymore. It was very hard for me to understand actually which is unfortunate because I feel like more people should know about this time period but the writing style did not mesh well with me at all unfortunately. Next we have a book I've already read. We have Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This was the lovely ladies live show pick for the month of January so I bought this off of Amazon because this was their 
pick for January. Also, just fair warning, our book pick for the month of February is Tweet Cute by Emma Lord. This is a YA romance, so our first YA book for our book club. So if you want to join in on all the fun in February, be sure to read Tweet Cute with us and please go check out our Twitter to stay up to date on our live show date because we have not scheduled that yet. Anyway, back to this book. If you want to know my thoughts on it, please go check out my January wrap up. This is about Chloe who has a chronic illness that I related a lot to and she decides to make a get a life list because her life has been kind of boring and uh, she has her superintendent read help her complete this list. I love this book a lot. Go check out my January wrap up to know my thoughts on it. Next we have Passion on Park Avenue by Lauren Lane. I bought this book because this is the book for February for Book Talks After Dark with Shelby and Kendra. From Shelby Taggart Reads and Kendra Loves Books. They asked me to co-host February with them for their book club and we are reading Passion on Park Avenue. I don't really know much about this book. It's a romance that I've been hearing great things about. I don't honestly want to know that much about it. I want to go blind into this. I believe our live show is on February 28th if I'm not mistaken but I will leave the live show date actually down below unless I am mistaken. There's a lot of live show dates coming up in February. I'm really excited to read this though and to just read it with Kendra and Shelby and to hear their thoughts. So if you want to join us, be sure to tune in at the end of February. Last are the two books that I got in my Bay Crate box. I was the representative for January for Bay Crate. I will leave a link down below to my unboxing video. There was a bunch of goodies and amazing things in this box and I got two books in this box. First we have My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. These are both historical romance books by the way. This has to deal with a girl named Catherine. She's the oldest out of all of her sisters. All of her sisters are engaged but they cannot be married until the oldest sister is married. Like that's how it was back then. So Catherine pretends to be engaged to the town recluse who's never out, no one's seen him for years. So she pretends to be engaged to him and like tells people that she's engaged to this man that no one's ever seen before. So all of her sisters can get married and live happy lives. But then one day the guy that she claims she's engaged to pops up out of the blue in her town and asks her what's going on. That sounds really interesting to me. I'm really, really excited to read this one. And the last book on this list is The Beast of Beswick by Emily Howard, the other book from my Bay Crate box. This one sounds really interesting. This is kind of like a Beauty and the Beast retelling. The Duke of Beswick has kind of like anger issues, I would say, and he has a ruined face, I believe, from war. And then Lady Astrid Everly will stop at nothing to see her younger sister safe from a notorious scoundrel, even if it means offering herself up on a silver platter to the forbidding beast of Beswick himself. And by offer, she means what no highborn lady of sound and sensible mind will ever dream of, a tender marriage with her as his bride. That sounds great. That sounds like a Beauty and the Beast retelling in the making. I love Beauty and the Beast retelling, so I can't wait to read this one and to add another historical romance book to my red shelf because I haven't read a lot, which stinks. But anyways, there you have it. Those are all of the books that I hauled in the month of January. I also hauled a bunch of ebooks. So if you want to know about all of those, a bunch of those are free actually. Go check out my January ebook haul that is up on my channel. But anyways, thank y'all so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in the next one. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.